I personally think that the challenges haven't really changed um, enormously. A really, really great brand has got to connect with people. Um, it's got to resonate with its audience. It's got to offer something that's compelling that people really believe in, and it's got to have some, it's got to have a purpose that you can that you can get behind. And um, and the social channel and the social world is just another way of a brand expressing itself and having to find a way of having some sort of relevance with its with its audience. So. Um, I don't think fundamentally the nature of branding has changed. I think that, um, that great brands transcend those particular platforms or things or networks. Um, uh, it's the great brands who are able to adopt it and make that part of what it is that they do. So brands are using social channels exactly as they've been using lots and lots of other channels, whether they're printed, whether they were etching things in stone. Um, it's just another way of them communicating. The real power, in my opinion, isn't with the brand, it's with the people. And um, it's because people are demanding en masse to have more authentic, more real, um, whether they're more sustainable, whether they're, you know, we don't, want, we don't want this brand to do something terrible. There's now a bigger platform for them to communicate back to the brands. I don't know whether, it, I don't know whether the brands are being more honest. Mm. I think that they're being, you know, thankfully and right, rightfully so, they're being um, challenged to be a better business. Like you were saying, the, the channels of communication mean that people can find out more information and they want to find out more information. So, for instance, when we're doing a film with Head, which found this 19-year-old who did this most amazing kind of backflip and landed it, people then want to find out, you know, online they're looking at what, they're asking the question like, what's the gear he's wearing? You know, what's that track that they're listening to? Um, who is this guy? Where is he kind of doing this stunt next that I can find out? So you've got to kind of like, give the authentic stories to enable that kind of almost like a long tail of them being able to kind of find out lots more information around those stories. So people aren't really looking for those really fabricated marketing stories anymore that isn't a real guy that's living this false life because it's a dead end for them. So brands need to have really authentic, engaging stories that people can kind of deep dive into. There are a lot of couch designers who are very willing to get on the message boards, get on Twitter, get on the various different blogs and share their thoughts. And it's, it's a very, very um, unusual thing. The Premier League is a, a cherished brand. It's, a re it's been an absolute privilege to work on um, this brand that is a real institution that all of us have grown up with. And we knew that the moment that that went live, there would be plenty of, plenty of feedback I'd like to, I think we'd all like to say, yeah, you get used to it and you get really blasé, but um, it's still one of those things that it does, it, um, it's, it's still, a, if anything, it's a record of how important the work that you're doing is. It's sort of a sad thing that so many people come out, like with anything, whenever there's change with anything, people come out guns blazing, usually quite negatively. And that's a real shame because Essentially, people are just judging a, um, the finished product and usually they're just judging the finished logo. And so a brand gets condensed into um, probably like the very surface artifacts of what that thing is and all of the research, the insight, the foundation, the platform, the changes to the business, the opportunities, maybe even repointing a business in a whole new direction. Um, all of that thinking is sort of somehow uh, summed up by people that, that, you know, sometimes people with a lot of experience um, is sort of reduced to that very, very surface thing. So it's a real surprise. And I think we're always surprised when, you know, with Airbnb, we had a massive backlash as well. The, the true testament is that a few weeks with the Premier League, I think the, the tide is already very, very positive. Or with Airbnb, now one of the most iconic brands in the world, um, the, the proof is, if, you, if we've done our research right and we've built the right strategic foundation and the right platform for this brand, then it doesn't really matter what the negative backlash within the first 72 hours might be because there's an awful lot of rigor and there's a lot of thinking and we believe it, the client believes it, and it, sometimes it just takes time for the rest of the world to believe it. And There's, there's only one thing worse than um, launching a brand and expecting the, to set the world on fire and then realizing nobody's interested. And I think that's what we're good at is um, 
we, I think we work, it's not that we go out and we try to work with people that, that I don't know, garner a lot of interest and a lot of press, but an awful lot of the work when we release it does receive an awful lot of attention. And, and I think in part that's because of the way that we talk about the work and the way, the confidence we give our clients in talking about what their brand can now do and stuff like that. And we work really hard at that as well. Mm-hmm. I think with the Premier League, is, I mean, I remember when the Airbnb thing happened. It's, I can't it was trending on Twitter, but I think it was like, 48 hours and it was number one for, for about 12, 13, 14 hours. Um, and I remember that time saying to the guys here, this will probably never happen again. So really it's like, you're not gonna get this much reaction to a brand launch, it's kind of unheard of. But as soon as we won the Premier League job, well, I said this is gonna happen again. Of course it is, this is something that's absolutely loved. No matter what we do, if we'd have literally not touched the logo itself, if we have just tweaked a color, it's still gonna have a huge response on Twitter. So we did in a way expect it, um, and I think we actually sometimes have to get our clients um, ready for it. I don't think they always expect it. No matter who we're working with, when it's a, a brand that's in the public eye a lot, we have to get them ready for there will be a reaction, positive and negative. So you need to be ready for that. You need to give people, you need to give people the context for something. So I think we did that very well with Airbnb. We launched a lot of the environment around the market itself. A lot of the reasons the decisions were made. Um, we told them the community that this was a symbol for them as so the basis of why this change had happened. And that helps people then understand the decisions. The Premier League was a little different because um, the press knew that there was, there was something going on, so we had, to, we had to launch the logo, but we haven't really given it as much context yet, which is gonna happen uh, at the start of the next season. Uh, and the same happened with Uber recently, and I'm not gonna jump on a bandwagon because I've gotta be honest, you've got to give these things at least a year to be able to look at how it's changed, how they're communicating differently, how do I feel about Uber now, have they made significant business change, and that's how I should react to the brand. And the identity then, if everything landed back to that change, it may be absolutely perfect. But seeing it on day one, I don't think you can make that call. I think probably a bit of it is by everyone slowing down a little bit. I think when something is launched, you know, everyone trying to have the opinion on that day and, you know, the headlines trying to be like, is this right? Or what is this mess? Um, that sort of short termist approach means that there just hasn't been enough critical debate about something and um and i think like the way that the architecture press i think operates is much more um uh, collaborative it feels like it's a lot more collegiate there's a bit of a process where the press go through why decisions were made they you know they'll spend time looking at the models that didn't make it they'll look at the drawings and try and understand the flow of why whatever decision was made was made And then the press are able to tell the story of the project. And I think in design, there are a few niche publications that that do do, I think, a good job of that, of trying to get underneath the story of why something's happened. But certainly some of the mainstream presses, and you can sort of imagine why, they're against tight deadlines and stuff like that. Um, But a lot of the mainstream press hasn't quite got that sort of relationship with with agencies. I personally think moving forwards, it would be great to see um, uh, publications working with agencies to understand the journey and to talk about those big decisions. So, I mean, Airbnb was a, as an obvious example of giving something time and then understanding it. The London Olympics, I mean, another perfect example. And the press will be very quick to leap on it at the beginning and then when they're almost proved wrong, there's no mention of it and what a success and how brilliant it was and how London was like brought to life with this beautiful kind of like patterns and colours and everywhere. And I remember when that came out, I mean, I was probably one of the people that I could have jumped on that and criticised it. It wasn't the Otlika mark that I loved. It wasn't that kind of design level. And I'd have done it differently. But actually, when you saw it in 2012, like how it came to life, how the BMW cars flying through the city, like branded in this, this texture, these colors and this mark, it was amazing. It worked perfectly. And I think that's what you need to do. We just need to give these brands and these brand identities time and watch them kind of live in the world that they're supposed to live in. Because the launch is actually just the start of that process.